Hey, it's Grandmaster Eric Hansen, and I have hopefully a fun new speedrun for you. This one, it's E4 every single game, and we're just going to be playing Romantic Chess, which is like opening gambits, attacking, going for checkmate, dynamic, aggressive, you name it. I hope you'll enjoy the series and learn a thing or two. Wish me luck. The first game. First game, here we go. E4 is white. Every single game, and we're gonna have some fun. I like to play aggressive. Ah, oh, we got a French enjoyer. Maybe they've been watching a Mon speedrun. Okay, let's grab the center. That definitely isn't a Mon speedrun, that's for sure. H5, G5 square is a bit weak. Okay. Just develop, never seen this before. And this is going to be a problem later on. No, no. Oh. That seems dangerous. All right. Speaking of Amon's French speedrun, we dropped an episode today. Alrighty, that looks like a free night. Is it not? Yep. Thank you. And your queen's coming out. When your queen comes out, it can get attacked easily. So let's proceed. And if I'm saying that the queen can get attacked easily here, when you bring it out early, what's the next move going to be? What am I gonna do as white? Queen's out, it's vulnerable. Doesn't have pieces around it to protect. Look at the board. No, not King G3. Well done, E5. E5 opening up the bishop. I think that was a forced move because the queen has no squares. Now we got more. We're not done. We got that special rule that beginners have to learn. On facade. He takes f6. Okay. All right. The queen is still uh, still vulnerable here. Let's continue. I'm not done chasing the lady. The end of the night at a club. 95, let's go. So there's only one square for the queen. And I have a few options afterwards. A few very, uh, very juicy options. Okay, that might be the best move, but thank you for the queen. Now, let's go here. Let's fork. I'm up a queen, so I might as well trade. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this first. Now I have some discover checks. Now, could trade if I want to invade. Black doesn't have a queen, so uh, I think we're in a good spot. And now we just shuffle down, and the back rank is open. I got 26 seconds, that's okay. This is a warm up game. First, you know, just the first game. We take. Now we're threatening knight g6, which will lead to checkmate. Okay, that's a good response. Oh, here, that's a double check. There's checkmate in a few moves. Maybe. Maybe not. Check. Check. I'm trying to trying to chase the king down. 
We're gonna get there. Alrighty. This is perfect. You're taking away the escape square. It's a good start. Good start for the boys. We finally get a white game and I just split some coffee. Oops. We're doing E4. A very aggressive E4, by the way. I'm gonna try to try to be pretty aggressive here. The Caro, we have uh, I'm gonna play a pretty common uh, move order here. E5, the advance, and I have some stuff ready. The goal is to kind of cramp Black's development by playing E5. And uh, just go from there, develop some pieces. Bishop d3. We might set up a Greek sacrifice if you know what that is. Knight here. Sorry. I don't uh, think the knight's going to survive. We're going to kick it away. You can use pawns. Why do you push pawns? Well, in this case, it was clear. I pushed the pawn to harass the knight and gain some space. Now the knight has to go back. Alrighty. We'll practice some good habits, so I'm just going to castle. I could push the pawn further, but the other way of thinking is the pawn here prevents the knight from jumping in the game. And that prevents black from even castling. Now we're way ahead in development, so it's just time to start, start attacking, bring some other pieces in. This is a good h-pawn. Want to go knight c3, y c4? Just want to add some tension. Try to break down Black's position, because Black is very solid. Even though their position isn't good, still have to break through. And I still have to be careful about how I do that. I can't go Knight here. There's two defenders. You're just pushing pawns. When you have a lead in development, you usually prefer open positions. So I'm going to take here. And... Let's develop the final minor piece. Bishop f4. You don't need to like force a win. Having a big space advantage is already very unpleasant for black. Now, let's bring the rook to c1. It's the only uh, file with potential right now. Queen d7. Okay, now, now this square is available. So I'm going to probably put something here in a second. Maybe bishop g5. If I can get my queen over, attack these weak pawns. Or h6. h6 is a good move. I'm just bringing all the pieces in first. h6. The knight is still stuck. And the dark squares are pretty weak, so I have an idea. Bishop g5, knight h2, knight g4. Might be one way of trying to get in the position, or bishop g5, queen f4. But I have some squares and black doesn't. So let's go here. And now my queen can also join the party. Maybe even bishop f6, there's a lot of good options here. Kind of tempting. Do I take with the knight or the queen? I'll take with the queen. So, I got lots of strong dark squares. I have a big position, so I'm not going to trade queens. That makes black's position easier. When you're cramped, you don't have a lot of space, you have a lot of pieces to deal with. Trading makes it easier to manage, so I'm not going to not going to allow that. Let's go knight g5 to stop black from playing g5. f6. So I have two defenders. So if I take, queen takes, queen takes. That looks good. I think this is good. Let's double check. Pawn takes. No. 
Looks good to me. Am I missing something? Is there anything defending the queen? Double check. 45 seconds, he's got 20. It's good to me. That's just a free queen. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. And now the next move, queen f7. That's a check and it hits the rook. I like it. Hmm. I could take the rook, but a checkmate might be better. So let me try something. Perfect. Check. And now, wait to play and win. You have 15 seconds. I can take the rook, but we're going for checkmate. We're trying to get better at attacking. Well done, well done. Awesome for real. Queen c7. The rook and the queen line up here. No escape squares. Up uh oh from Argentina. Argentina played New Zealand in rugby today. I'm going to play against e5. We're going to show a few different things. Let's start with the king's gambit. I'm playing classical music. Let's play some romantic chess. Bishop c4 and knight of 3 are the moves, but uh, it's going to be aggressive. It's just all about attacking here. You sack a pawn for, uh, for potential. Out of curiosity, I'm curious how he's going to respond after this move. This isn't necessarily theory. Oh, he knows what he's doing. Okay. That's, that's good. This is a good way to respond with that. I didn't expect that at 500 ELO. Because I'm not sure I want to make this trade. So I'm actually going to respect the move and move back. Usually they move the knight and they hop around losing time. Another. It's a very interesting move. So I think the idea here is that if I take, black takes here and they're like, oh, I'm going to win a queen. But if we calculate, if I take the knight and they take here, I have queen e2 check, hitting the pawn and hitting the king. So it's kind of unclear. But I think that favors me. So we're going we're gonna to play aggressive this. I'm, I'm going to just go for it. Pawn takes, queen g2 check. They can actually block with a queen, which is an absurd looking move. But I cut and they found it. I, this guy, very impressive. Now they make a new queen. I take the bishop with check. We have to count the material. To me, I have two pieces for a rook. But my king is weak, their king is weak. It's hard to say. So we're going to take with this with check. And now this is loose. So I got to go go queen here pretty wild position pretty pretty wild position that i'm just gonna go netty too just depends do you want the rook or do you want the two pieces Rook and two pawns versus two pieces. It depends. Are the two pawns worthwhile or the is the... Let's go... One thing for sure is for me to win versus the rook, I need to use my minor pieces. So let's bring the knight out. This is a strong 500. This is a strong 500. No doubt. Oh, he smokes. We can get one of our pawns back. Shall we pursue that? With tempo? Hard to say no, right? I don't know why our 500s in our channel don't play like this. This is... This guy's really good. Alright. 
So automatically you could take this and be like, okay, I'm good, I'm happy. But we could consider taking here. And we're gonna do that because I want a really sharp game. Because at some point you need to learn how to calculate and play sharp. I'm gonna be like, you know what? I could take this, but if I take on c7 first, I might win a rook. Maybe my knight gets trapped there, worst case, then the material is relatively even. But I'd rather win the rook than win the bishop. The only, you know, I, okay, yeah, so now, now I think we should take the rook. Bring the king out. I'm going to bring my knight out right away so it doesn't get trapped. And now i got to bring the other pieces in. So let's go... Let's go... D4. So this bishop can join the party. Remember, I'm covering the check. Knights move backwards. That's a funny looking move. I'm going to match it. Bring my own king out. I'm going to have to move my king out because I want to bring my rook in the game. Let's develop the bishop and defend. That's strong. Bring the rook in. It's not doing anything on a1. Try to give this guy some credit. It's coming for me. All right, let's defend this uh, this bishop, and I'm threatening knight here. If the knight goes to f6, white to play. I don't care about material, we're learning how to checkmate. This is an aggressive e4. I got rook e5. And that's a nice mate in the middle of the board. That guy was strong. So the king can't take this, doesn't have any escape squares, but that was a strong 500. Get some aggressive e4 stuff in. Let's try the Danish gambit. So I go d4 first, challenge the center. Okay, usually they take. Didn't happen this time. That means I'm gonna take anyways. And throw my pawns, throw my pawn center at black. I went knight f3 first so that if I go f5, the knight can't reroute back to the center. I didn't want to allow that. And now I can go f5. Although technically you could go knight e5. Knight takes e5, queen check. I don't, didn't expect my opponent to see that. And now I have a trick that you're going to like. d5, I'm going to tuck my bishop in. But my bishop's actually going to come out. After he takes. I'm going to attempt him one more, one more time. Take on e4. Please. I had a, a trick, but uh, no cigar. So I could win this pawn. But I'd rather just attack the king and open up lines. For example, knight e5. Oh no, my knight's hanging. Oh darn. Bishop, it's knight, f7. Bishop takes f7, king can't go here, 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 here. That's a quickie. Checkmate. Aggressive e4, let's go, let's go. Against d4, let's try the Danish again. Take the pawn. Take another pawn. Canadians are trustworthy. Take another pawn. One of my first openings. You give up multiple pawns for development. To be fair, I actually don't remember much theory from 20 years ago when I was playing this, but what I do know is I got two bishops and I'm supposed to attack. So let's begin.
This is a tempting move, but the knight comes back. I could take and go queen here. I win one pawn back, which doesn't look very juicy. Queen d5, the knight comes back. Hmm. Interesting. We're going to go queen d5. That's the energy. That's the energy. If knight here, we'll go f4. We'll just see what buddy does. Holy cow. Okay, what? So this is a threat. When I take here, the king goes here, I'm defending this. But if I go here, where does the queen go in relation to the knight? If I go g3 and the queen moves back, I can just take the knight, right? g3, queen goes here, I can just go f3. And I think I can poach the knight. And I think I'd rather win the knight than win this pawn. Let's investigate g3. I'm still keeping this check in my pocket. Can't he take with a knight? Sure, sure can take with a knight. I can take with a pawn. And my rook is defended by the queen. Or I can take with the other pawn. That would just be lots of material for me. Alright, now we take. And the good thing about check, hitting the bishop, is I can block with the bishop. Otherwise, I might not be too happy. Okay, now we're good. D5 is actually a cheeky threat here. Cheeky, cheeky threat. Let's start with this move. Poke. Poke the queen. Oh! All right, I got a cool move here. It has to do with this, and it has to do with this. Do you see the geometry here? I could go queen f3, hitting the bishop, hitting the pawn, but then they can give a check and castle. So how do we switch that move order and make it more forcing? Queen f3 allows check and castle. Gotta take. Then after king f7, then we go check. That's the move order. Check. Not giving black any time to throw in a check. And now let's queenside castle. High testosterone only. And uh, yeah, now we're good. Now just bring the rest of the pieces in. Whoa! Check! Push. Isn't looking good for buddy. And we have Swan Lake playing in the background. Good vibes right now. It's crashing through. And if you give me a couple more moves, I'm actually going to bring my knight in. I'm not going to take this. I'm going to wait. And now I'm going to take. That was a nice Danish. It worked out this time. Check. Let's practice our back rank technique. We could go queen e8 check, knight f8, knight e7, that's checkmate. I'm going to practice an easier one, queen f7, force the king in the corner. Now the knight doesn't defend itself. It's not defended by the king. Now queen e8, and that's all she wrote. And I can pre-move. I didn't, but there you go. Shocker Oz, thanks to the prime. Everyone's playing e5. We're going to try the Danish again. d4. Another pawn. Another pawn. Okay, I probably should have reviewed my lines. But it's okay.
We will attack. Like this. Same as last time. My bishops are ready. If they give a check, I just dad bod shuffle. And the difference here is that my knight's already developed, so I could consider queen d5. And if you go here, I can take. Might not be game over, but we're going to have a bit of fun. So knight g5 takes. They might have bishop e4 check. Oh. It's not me. Hold your horses. King now has an escape square. But I think we should take the pawn. Is there anything else? I could castle, but that seems like black is defending. We gotta take check. But where's the checkmate now? There's no checkmate. And if there's no checkmate, the game goes on. And what does that mean? It means, what it means is that I need to bring more pieces in. Because there's no, I don't see a checkmate. And I'm worried about my own king getting attacked. It's time to castle. Time to develop, get some good habits in. Okay. Black's king is in trouble. Now my king is safe in the long run. Ooh. I saw this move and I had something prepared. So I'm not going to give away my bishop in trade. Yes, my queen and bishop are both being attacked. No, I don't have any checks. I'm going to go queen d5, hopefully pinning this. Because the knight takes here, the queen hang. The knight goes here, I take. If they defend, I might have f4. Because this is going to be a high t speed run. It's going to be very aggressive. We'll grab that. Thank you for the knight. And now what's the material? We have a knight for two pawns. Oh, we have more than, we have more now. Uh-oh. Drop the soap. That's an additional pawn for me. Let's just bring the pieces in now. Now there's only one pawn, which is not, oh. The one thing you should learn when you watch my speedruns, not just this, other ones, is I'm good with my bishops, and you also could be. It's very easy. Just just pay attention to your bishops. Make sure you understand that they have diagonals, and they go back. Makes life a lot easier. Hey, Redson. All right. Let's double check if he knows his bishop's hanging. Okay, he does. I just want to trade now. Now we're just trading. We're up to, we're up a rook and the knight. So just the trading into the end game, just trading everything off. Let's get rid of that. Automatic, automatic trades. Just gonna take everything in front of me. Thank you for the pawn. Let's grab this. Let's give a check. After king up, I'm gonna defend my rook and prepare a nasty checkmate. I have a checkmate coming up. It's being cooked. It's gonna take a couple moves, but it's coming. Where are you going to put the king? D8, sorry, E8 or D7. Or maybe nowhere. Maybe disconnected. That's okay. Another Danish win. We take those.
Good stuff. There we go. You've made it through another episode of my E4 speedrun. To continue watching the next one, just click on the video beside me. And all I ask is that you consider clicking that subscribe button below the video to support our future content.